Okay, in this example, we're going to see if we can bind a, a shell, a command prompt, and create a flying shell to send a command prompt um, from the Windows XP client to the um, backtrack terminal window. So, and this would be called a bind shell. So we're going to try to bind command prompt to netcat and then pick it up from the backtrack client. So on our Windows system to do this, in order to do this, um, these will be the commands that we're going to put in. We'll say netcat is listening verbosely on port and we'll say this time 7777, we'll just pick that port. But instead of just leaving it like that, we're going to then use the execute parameter here and execute command.exe, which is our command prompt. And we'll set that up, right? So now, binding our command prompt to netcat if we have a connection on port 777. So now, in our backtrack machine, we can run netcat, put in the IP address, put in our port, and if we're successful, we've got a shell. So we've got a remote shell, so this would be sent right across the network. All right, let's try that again and a reverse bind shell. So we'll cancel that, clear it, and we'll try to reverse that so that the server, instead of um, serving the shell, is actually going to receive a shell. So this is our server here. Let's clear this screen. And what we'll do is we're going to set up that listener, but we're not going to execute a command prompt to our connection. We're just going to set up the listener. And now the client, when it connects to the server, will actually send the command prompt. And what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to uh, type in NC and let's see here. All right, and what we're going to use is no DNS. All right, and okay, that sounds good. All right, I'm going to clear that. All right, so I'll say netcat no DNS verbosely. I'm going to connect to our IP address that we want to connect to on port 7777 and this time we're going to execute and send our root bin bash shell and hit enter and then on our XP client we look and we don't have a sign that we've received a terminal from Backtrack, but if we type ls, you can see here that we get um, information, right? And we could uh, change directory, go up one directory, and then hit ls, and you can see that we've got Backtrack um, root directory. All right, that was pretty good. Okay, let's try using Netcat as a um, one-shot web server listening on port 80 and connecting to Netcat from a web browser on another machine and seeing if we can get it to transfer a file. So um, on my Backtrack machine, I'm going to, let's say, run Netcat, have it listen on port 80, and then I'll input into it this image file that I have. Now I've had more luck with with um, Netcat serving an image file on port 80 and getting it in a browser window than I have with my test.html file. And I'm not sure if it's the formatting of the HTML file because the formatting is actually good. It just seems to not not able to um, display the page. So if I hit enter, now Netcat is listening on port 80 so I've basically set Netcat to be a web server. So on my other machine here, if I use a web browser and try to connect to that computer through the web browser, which connects web browsers by default when you just 
connect they usually it's a port 80 connection and I'll hit enter and you can see we've made the connection and there's the image of the dog the JPEG image and so that worked pretty good right um, picture was downloaded now what I could do is I can try to I'll close that out right and I'll do the same thing and the test.html file doesn't seem to work as well so I'll hit refresh here and we'll see if we can pick up that file but it just doesn't seem to want to show the HTML web page I got it to work a couple of times but most of the time it's just been um, pretty buggy so anyway that's it that's Netcat as a one-shot web server working with the JPEG not working with an HTML file